Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, March 12th, 2019. This is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. And this is not specific to anything, not love, not a sign, not career, not nothing. <laughs> this is just what spirit would like to discuss with us today. So because energies are fluid, this could be something that you're going through right now. It could be something from the past. It could be something coming up in the future, or it may not resonate with you at all. Either way, use your own discretion and take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Yeah. I hope everyone's having a good week so far. <clears throat> it is Tuesday. A reading just didn't feel right yesterday, so I just didn't do one. I'm learning to just follow the energy um, and not necessarily force a reading to come through for the day if there really isn't one resonating. Today feels right, so here we are, yeah? All right, so let's get to it. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Tuesday, March 12th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. I don't know if, if you guys could hear it, but Mark, Ar Ar Archangel Michael made a little bit of an appearance already. It might have been too far away for the, mic the microphone to pick it up, but I heard it. And I took notice of it, so I wanted to point it out to you guys. All right. Tuesday, March 12th. Tuesday, 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 March 12th, 2019, best messages please spirit for the collective, alrighty, here we go, let's see what we've got for today. Six of Cups. Hmm. Okie dokie. Overall energy, we have the Seven of Wands. So a defensiveness, but I'm also hearing structure. It's interesting. Defensiveness, boundaries, structure, though, could be right. We have the Knight of Swords, the Magician, the Three of Swords with the Six of Cups, and then we also have the King of Pentacles and the Four of Swords in reverse. All right. So the name of the game right now, or at least in this situation, this is all about boundaries, having greater boundaries. Okay. Um, and learning about, well, about learning about having greater boundaries, but also um, when to enforce them. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, we have the Knight of Swords with the Magician, the Three of Swords, and the Six of Cups. So obviously there's a situation in which there was a past relationship. Um, something from the past, okay? A circumstance, Spirit is saying, from the past that someone is actively trying to manifest their way out of. With great vigor, too, because this Knight of Swords energy feels like... Um, a bodyguard, a, a guardian, standing the ground. It's a defensive uh, uh, energy. Mm, okay, well, 
we can see this two ways. We can either see this as one, the top card, the, I'm sorry, the top cards or the top row here is someone working on manifesting their way out of a relationship from the past or a circumstance from the past that was really quite heartbreaking and standing up for themselves and really, you know, putting some hard boundaries in place because the person that was involved here um, is represented by the King of Pentacles, is very materialistic, ego-driven, money-driven, status, fame-driven, maybe not too grounded either, um, illusions of grandeur I'm seeing, very sure of himself, probably, you know, very, well, not necessarily sure of themselves, more full of themselves, okay? And someone is working on manifesting their way away from this type of person, that could be it. But the but actually, the biggest thing that I'm seeing here is this is this person that we're talking about here, up here. The top row is this person, represented by the King of Swords, I'm sorry, the King of Pentacles in reverse. Coupled with the Four of Swords in reverse. This is not someone that's willing to look deeper into the situation. Is not willing to see the deeper truths of why things have happened the way they have. Learn something new. Gain some sort of new perspective through this circumstance. Now, this person here, represented by the King of Pentacles, has been heartbroken. And most likely from as when they were a child. Three of Swords, Six of Cups. Most likely when they were a child, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, it could be at any point in their past. Uh, Spirit is also saying maybe potentially even in their recent history, they've been hurt with the Three of Swords energy. And so now as a result, I don't feel like they are... Um, with this king, I'm sorry, that this knight of swords here, I don't feel like they communicate very well, if at all. If they do communicate, it's probably really blunt, really brash, harsh, combative. This is a very combative energy with this knight of swords. And the magician um, feels like what they are working on manifesting in their lives is, um, I'm hearing vibrato, is all ego-driven, narcissistic in nature. Um, and there are some heavy, there are some hard boundaries, seven of wands here, but also that could be spirit's way of saying to whomever is dealing with this person or is connected with this person to maintain your boundaries within this. You know what I mean? Like, because this feels very toxic. Now, this is, we are no stranger to these types of energies or relationships um, on this channel, in this group of us, you know, that, you know, we're no stranger to this type of energy. So the one th so th so this is not anything new, okay? But the one thing that's standing out in my in my opinion that I want to convey here is that yes, this person may be reversed, may be very egotistical, may be very money driven, financially driven, uh, possessions, uh, fame, fortune, whatever. Maybe they may be driven by this sort of energy, but intrinsically, that's not who they are. I mean, I'm not trying to say, now, okay, so first of all, this is in fact a masculine energy, whether they're in a male body or a female body. Um, and this could really be, this could be a friend of yours um, or like an old friend, an old acquaintance, someone that, um, you used to work with, like a business associate, a business partner, a creative partner, whatever. And for the most part, I feel like some of you have been kind of on the fence about what do you do with this person? Should I leave them behind? Should I continue to include them in my life? 
If they're toxic though, now's the time to not be dealing with toxic energies like this. But what I was trying to say is they may, you know, yes, and this being a masculine energy, sure, they're going to be focused on the physical aspects of life. I mean, obviously. Just like the feminine aspects are more focused on the spiritual, etheric, and that kind of thing, right? Okay. But to the extent that this person is going after these things, King of Pentacles in reverse, right? Negatively aspected King of Pentacles with a Four of Swords in reverse, not really to, willing to look at the, the bigger picture, not willing to stop and meditate and see a, uh, a different perspective, clear the mind, clear the space, do some healing. Because they're not willing to do that, they're that much more materially driven. And it feels like this person is using that to prove some sort of point, potentially, or um, prove to themselves that they're better or they're, they're not in pain, they're not hurt, whatnot. It's, it's, it's a coping mechanism. And unfortunately, there's nothing you can do to stop this, to save them, to help them, because it's very obvious with this Four of Swords energy here that they don't want the help. Damn near say, or dare I say, don't even think they need help. Everything is fine. When no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> And I'm not laughing at this person. If this is you, I'm not laughing at you. But I honestly, I don't know what to tell you. For whomever this is resonating out with out there, if you're listening, I don't know what to tell you. If you don't wanna face some stuff yourself. The one thing I can tell you is that this pain, this heartbreak will never go away until you face it. So you will constantly be on the hamster wheel trying to escape it, thinking that you're making progress, thinking that you're getting away from it when you're not moving at all. You're on a hamster wheel, <laughs> right? Does that make sense? Okay, let's get into some clarification now. Using the Crystal Visions deck here. I want to start by clarifying this King of Pentacles and Four of Swords first. One more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got here. All right, clarification please. The energies of this King of Pentacles and Four of Swords in reverse. Just some clarification please, Spirit. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Wow. Uh, wow. Well, I was not expecting this. We have Underneath the deck, we have the Six of Swords, okay? And then we have the Ace of Cups, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Three of Pentacles. It looks like this person is about to make some sort of change. And it's going to start with them. Oh, oh, there's more. The Queen of Cups, wow. It looks like it's starting with this Ace of Cups here. It's starting with self-love. And underneath this Ace of Cups was the Queen of Cups. It seems to me, or at least what I'm getting from this, there is a feminine energy here that is helping to influence a cup of self-love. Now, 
regardless of whether you are actually in communication with this person or not. So like say, maybe you're twin flames and um, you know, you've gone into separation with zero contact or you dated this person and you guys have broken up and you're not communicating with each other any longer. Or this was a friend, you know, and you have little to no contact with this friend anymore. Regardless of the circumstance, you don't have to, what I'm trying to say is you don't have to be in contact with this person right now for, for them to feel your influence. And it's not even like you have to have influenced them in any way, done anything new recently. This could just be residual from the past. When you were in their lives, when you were loving, um, giving them love and support and compassion, being compassionate with them, you know, being giving, being caring, being nurturing and that kind of thing. All of that stuff that the Queen of Cups represents. It is, in fact, influencing this person to make some sort of change within themselves, to love themselves more to honor themselves more. And it has a lot to do with the fact, with the, with the kind of the energy of, well, no matter what, even though things, you know, may have ended poorly or we just stopped talking to each other, whoever is represented by the Queen of Cups here, this person like still loved me and still tried to help me no matter what I did, which, eventually would translate into feeling lovable and thus the karmic wheel starts to spin in a new direction. Wheel of fortune, change, and self-mastery comes into play. Three of pentacles. So it's looking like Okay, well, I'm totally seeing a new perspective here now after these clarifiers came out. Because the King of Pentacles in reverse with the Four of Swords in reverse, um, being really money-driven, ego-driven, and materialistic and all that, and not wanting to see a bigger picture, not wanting to see a new perspective, that was the past. Apparently, moving forward, there's big change coming. <clears throat> and it's in the form of self-love here. Ace of Cups. That's really beautiful. Congratulations to this Queen of Cups here. Because even though the situation may not have ended the way you wanted it to, maybe you, you two aren't really speaking to each other any longer, but it looks like your efforts were successful. Six of Swords. Mental healing. To me, this, card, this is a card of mental healing. Six is a number of healing, harmony, balance. And this is swords, so it's the mind. And the six of swords represents um, moving from rougher waters to calmer waters. So there's a sense of healing there. And then also the crows on this card. You see the top of the card, the blackbirds. Those, to me, look like or sim can symbolize crows, which are energies of change. Transformation, death, you can even say. All right. So now let's get a little bit of clarity into this energy of the Knight of Swords, the Magician, the Three of Swords, and the Six of Cups. Let's get some clarity on this, please, Spirit. Um... Uh, let it fall out. Okay, wow, look at that. The Seven of Wands again. <laughs> and the Six of Wands. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, first of all, the Six of Wands, to me, is that energy of keeping up appearance, potentially. And um, so there's definitely a little bit of that going on. I would not, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. Five of Swords, okay. 
We have the Seven of Wands, the Five of Wands, and the Five of Swords. That's icky. The Chariot, the High Priestess, and the World. So we're actually going to split this up this way. So these are the boundaries that are in place here. You have the Seven of Wands with the Five of Swords and the Five of Wands. And we also have the Five, the Six, and the Seven of Wands here, which is pretty cool. But this is what the, the boundaries are against. Combativeness, backstabbing, sabotage, one-upmanship, twisted masculinity, twisted femininity, femininity represented, all of those represented by the Five of Swords, opposing opinions, uh, the peanut gallery, if you will, outside opinions, maybe even inner conflict as well with the Five of Wands. But what I'm really seeing between these two, this is really external. This is all the external influence that helped to create whatever heartbreak this person had been through in their lives, okay? But now, which yes, absolutely could lead to internal conflict and all that, but now there are greater boundaries in place. Seven of Wands has come out twice. Seven of Wands is underneath the deck here, and here we have the Seven of Wands here. All right, so there is a defensiveness, there is a guardedness from this type of energy, this type of influence, okay? And then we move on to the Chariot, the High Priestess, and the World. Or I guess, technically, we could put it this way. The High Priestess first, because there is greater understanding, deeper understanding um, from the universe, downloads from the universe. This actively is, I really do feel like this person that is represented by the King of Pentacles here, this masculine energy, whether they're male or female in gender, it doesn't matter, okay? But this masculine energy is receiving a lot of information from the feminine side the High Priestess, the Chariot, the World. All of these cards have feminine figures on them. Okay. So their feminine side is really starting to influence them. They're starting to learn a lot. They're starting to get some deeper insights from the universe. The High Priestess to me often um, talks about receiving downloads of higher wisdom, universal wisdom. And this is not, this is non-denominational. Non this is not religious or anything like that. It's pure spiritual knowledge. Information about the laws of the universe, you know, the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, the law of free will, all of that stuff. And starting to understand them, which is helping, helping to propel this person forward here with the chariot in a brand new direction with brand new passion, excitement, exuberance, and it's bringing a close. Spirit just said to a karmic cycle, to this karmic cycle. Wheel of Fortune, to this karmic cycle. It's bringing a close to it. And then so now, the Six of Wands actually can also mean victory overcoming the obstacles here, climbing the mountain, reaching the peak, reaching the summit. This is really great. Now, like I said before, whoever is represented by this Queen of Cups energy, yes, you have in fact catalyzed, helped this person grow regardless of whether you are actively seeing it or not, regardless of whether they are a part of your lives anymore or not, you have helped to influence this change. So congratulations. Now that does not mean that they're gonna come back to you. It does not mean that, I mean, for the most part, you know, if this is resonating with people the way a lot of other readings ha may have been, and I mean by like from other readers, if this is falling in line with your situation and this reading is resonate with some other readings you may have watched, they're probably pretty intimidated by you. 
So it's one thing, like it's, it's hard enough for this change to be made, for this person to decide to go within and see the bigger picture, make some change or whatnot. It's a whole other thing for them to get up the courage to now approach you and say, you know, apologize or ask to start over or whatnot, whatever. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, okay? But what I am saying is, give it time and release any forms of expectation. Like, don't sit here listening to this reading and say, oh, great, well, then that means that they should be coming around soon. No. <laughs> Release the expectation. Be grateful for the fact that this person is going through, is finally starting to go through a deeper sense of healing and is coming out on top. Okay. Okay. Let's get into some oracle guidance here. And I do want to get some oracle from the uh, animal spirit guides today. And then we're going to, um, and then we're going to close the reading with something. I just don't know what yet. Alrighty. All right, animal spirits, what do we have for us today? Best message, please. There we go. Horse. All right. There you are. Horse. Momentum, freedom, expansive energy, and force. The horse represents the most masterful form of earth energy within the deck. It provides us with momentum so reliable, so supportive, that you can ride on its back toward any goal, no matter how difficult the terrain. <clears throat> A horse personality is fully awakened, fully alive, and cannot be defeated. The horse's freedom becomes available to us when we hone and collect our energy through daily practice. Physical stamina, exercise, and mental focus, meditation, are the secret weapons behind the horse's legacy. When in balance, horse can achieve anything and never gives up. When out of balance, horse runs away and feels weak. To bring it into balance, one needs strength training. But that makes perfect sense. That actually resonates really, really well here okay spirit is calling for the light worker oracle to close out the reading so we will use that one alrighty guys here we go. Best message, please, Spirit, to close out today's reading. Best message, please. There we go. Card number 12. Eternal now. Within you is great strength and courage. However, just because you can manage to keep going when you are drained or stressed, it doesn't mean you have to do so. You are encouraged by your higher guidance to request assistance in letting go of tension within your mind and body. You will gain energy through this release and perhaps even see things in a new and more optimistic light. Shifting into a more present, relaxed, and enjoyable state of being will help you overcome the past and successfully create your future. That's excellent. 
All right, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope everyone has a really fantastic day. Um, I may be doing happy hour tonight. Stay tuned. I will announce it. I will let you guys know. Um, but other than that, I love you all so much. Thank you for tuning in. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye.